Hey everyone! Today we're going to be making the Hortensia Barrel Bag from Oro Rosa Patterns. It is this fabulous little round bag right here that is on my sh shoulder. <laughs> Sorry. It has a couple different quilting options. I use the checkered quilting option. I used a turn lock for my closure. It's got this cute little flap and a double zip closure. Inside there is a zipper slip pocket combo and a slip pocket on the other side. The construction is awesome. The sides are bound, but don't be scared. It's not too bad. All right, so this is it. She's so cute. She throws up pretty fast. Um, here it is on the side. Hopefully you can see it. All right, so let's go ahead and get to sewing this. Okay, my quilting's all done, so I'm gonna go ahead and separate all of my fabrics into their packs and start on the flap. So we're gonna take the flap right sides together with the flap lining, match them up, and then we'll clip them together. Then we're gonna sew around the two straight sides and the curved edge, leaving this top alone. Okay, so it's gonna be a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance throughout this pattern, unless otherwise specified. Okay, so I've trimmed my edges and we'll turn this right side out. All right, we'll top stitch at an eighth of an inch and I'm gonna use a five and a half stitch length. If you want a magnet, um, for your flap insert that now I did my last one about a half inch up in the center on the flap go ahead and grab your main panel and lay it your flap on the back side with the lining side up and centered and clip it on and then we can baste it. Go ahead and grab your two zipper panels and your zipper. Sorry, mine is literally moving on the screen. Because I quilted mine, I'm gonna trim an eighth of an inch off. Then take your zip, uh, zippers and put them right side down against the edge of your zipper panel, clip it on, and repeat for the other one. Instead of basting this, we are actually sewing this at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, grab your main panel and the opposite edge of your zipper panel that your zipper's on. You want that raw edge up to the short edge of your main panel. And you're gonna clip that on on both sides. Here we're still using the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna trim just the main panel. And when we're doing this side, we're gonna catch the flap as well. Don't trim your zipper panel seam allowance though. Go ahead and open that up and press your seam towards the main panel and we'll top stitch. 
Okay, on this one, you're gonna wanna lift the flap up and push everything else down towards that main panel. Okay, so this part of the pattern might be the most frustrating just because everybody's um, lock closures are going to be different. So you just want to find the center bottom of your flap. So I'm just going to line it up here. So I'm going to mark it. All right. So that's my center. Okay. So you only want the back piece and you want to make sure you're using it upside down. It doesn't matter for mine, but it will matter for some folks. Okay, so I've got this laid in the center now where I want it. I'm going to trace my shape plus my screw holes. Now, a lot of people will have dies that you can use to cut out your shape, but I don't have a skull head die, so I'm just going to cut it out. I'll start by seam ripping a hole in the middle and then I'm going to cut just a little bit bigger than the skull head that I traced out and I'll punch out all of my um, screw holes. So I'm going to do this off screen and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like before installing it. Okay, this is what it looks like now. We can put the front on, lay the back on, and put your screws back in. All right. There we go. All right, now grab your two zipper poles and put your main panel, kind of roll it up into its tube. We're gonna flip the zipper out, put the rounded edge on on one side. Repeat for the other and get it all lined up. Make sure it's lined up. I'm just gonna leave it one pull for now. So you wanna roll this over and find your placement. Then you want to check it. So I like to try to keep it nice and smooth. This should be your finished width. So I'm keeping it nice and flat by holding it under here and trying to keep it flat as we roll it around. And then I should have my lock placement right here. Then I'm just going to trace out my skull Double check that I can see it and we should be good to go. I'm gonna check my lock placement once more because this is me. And it still matches up pretty good. So I'm gonna go with it. So my lock side is just a prong. So I just made two markings and I'm gonna uh, Cut those out with my seam ripper here and then install it. I should have a washer somewhere. I'll put the washer on the back and then close it up and then I'm going to check to make sure that it fits. Okay, so I got the washer on. I'm just going to flip this over. Oh, I should have installed this differently. That's a bummer. I didn't think about that. Anyways, it looks like it fits pretty good. There's no pulling. Ah, that is much better. Okay, so we've checked. We're gonna take this pull off and we're gonna set this to the side and grab our linings. We're gonna start with our slip pocket piece here and we're gonna fold it right sides together, matching up those short ends and we're gonna sew across the bottom. Trim your seam allowance down, turn your tube right side out, and then I'm gonna show you from the seam side, but you wanna do this on the right side, the pretty side. 
you want to have your seam kind of pushed up to the top a little bit so you have like no seam right here where you're going to top stitch it on later and then this the actual seams just a little bit higher then flatten that all out and we'll top stitch across the top i am going to skip attaching the slip pocket right now and i will do that in a moment for now i'm, I'm going to grab the zipper exterior and the zipper lining i used waterproof canvas for the lining and I've gone ahead and put double-sided tape on the top and bottom of these, this piece. I'm gonna take the tape backing off. I'm gonna separate my zipper. You're gonna put your zipper teeth side up at the top edge and flatten it down. Repeat on the other edge. And go ahead and put your exterior right sides together with that lining. Clip it together. Repeat on the other side and that'll make this exterior side pop up and that's what you want it to do. Then we're going to go sew this. Now that that's done, take your tube, flip it right side out. Press your lining and exterior wrong sides together so you get a nice crisp area to top stitch. We'll top stitch one side, then we'll flatten the other side and make sure that's all nice and we'll top stitch that one as well. Now you wanna figure out which way to put on your pulls. Since I have directional fabric, it's gotta be a certain way. So I like to fold these to the center and whichever one's facing the right way is the one I need. So I need to put this on now over here. So my skulls are facing the right way. And I want my sides to be lined up Looks like it's pretty good. So then you wanna take your lining and fold it down and then wrap your top edge just around the top edge of your zipper here. So you're only gonna have like maybe a half inch total up here at the top. And then we're gonna to top stitch across the top again. Okay, now your zipper pocket should have just a little bit of a gap at the bottom so it's thinner to top stitch through just like you do on your slip pocket. Go ahead and grab your slip pocket and your lining and a ruler. We're gonna measure down the same measurement on each side and then we're gonna baste and top stitch these on. So your slip pocket goes on one side and your zipper pocket goes on the other side. Now again, one of mine will be upside down. So I'm gonna put my slip pocket on the upside down side and my zipper pocket on the right side because when you open the bag, I'll have my zipper pocket on the back. So you'll be able to see that the one, the lining is the wrong direction right away if you opened up the bag. It's a little more hidden if you put it on the slip pocket side. Whoop. So let's go stitch these on. So we'll use just an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way th these three sides. Okay, so here's your lining so far. I added a hang tag. Here's your zipper pocket and a slip pocket. On the other side is your slip pocket. Go ahead and grab those two lining side panels. 
I'm gonna make sure mine goes the correct direction. We're gonna put them on the raw edges of this lining here, clip it down, and then we're going to sew down these long edges. Okay, now we just open those up, keep the seam pressed to the outside, and we will top stitch. Okay, let's go ahead and trim the seam allowance in the four corners. This is your lining. Go ahead and grab your main panel and put it right sides together with your lining. You want to make sure you have the correct side. So I wanted my back of my bag to have the zipper. So we're good. And I'm going to clip this to the top edge of the lining panel. All right, let's go stitch. Okay, let's go ahead and trim the main panel at a angle. Don't get your zipper tape. You're just doing the main panel. And go ahead and lift your zipper up and trim the lining. Again, we're going to flip the tube out, lay it wrong sides together. Okay, now that the lining is turned wrong, wrong sides together, let's top stitch across the top. And then we're going to baste those sides down. Now that our sides are basted, we can go ahead and grab our two zipper pulls. Okay, so this part can be kind of tricky, but you got this. We're gonna take our uh, bag and roll it so the exterior side is hidden. Then we're gonna put one round edge of our zipper pull upside down onto our zipper tape. Just like you do it normally, except you're doing it upside down. Once you get it, make sure your sides line up. See, mine are a little bit off, so I'm gonna re-thread it. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and slide the rest of that other zipper on. Staple these ends. Okay, so I've gone ahead and made my center markings on my side panels on the exterior. I also marked where my D-ring connectors are gonna go. I am using these D-ring connectors. They have two screws on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those screws off. Just like before, I'm gonna make my placement markings with this upside down. It doesn't matter for this one, but sometimes it does. I'll put this on the center of my marking and then make the marks for the screw holes. I'll punch those out, install these D-ring connectors and put a scrap of Peltex behind it. Okay, these are ready. Let's go ahead and grab our linings and put them wrong sides together. Clip them on and we will go baste these together. Transfer your center markings to your lining sides of both side panels. Find the bottom center of your bag. I'm gonna do that by matching the two side seams together and putting a clip down here. We'll do that on both sides. Now you're gonna need your stapler and one of your side panels. And we're gonna match up our center markings at the top, which is the skinnier area, with the center of your zipper tape. 
And I'm just going to put a clip there for now. And then I'm going to match up the bottom. And then I'm going to ease this around. So we're going to staple these in between. You want to make sure you're staying at an eighth of an inch. Now that that's done, we can head to the machine. I want to show you how I begin this because I'm going to start from one of these longer flat sides and I'm going to fold my bag in on itself so this can stay flat and um, I can access it better. Okay, so now we're going to sew this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, I'm going to use just a hair more than an eighth of an inch seam. So I can be sure not to sew on my staples. When we get up here, we're going to want to move the bag and keep it flat still. I like to go about two or three stitches and reposition the bag. Now that that's done, I'm going to remove my staples. Now let's trim up any unevenness. Grab your bias tape. I'm using Mandela Crafts double fold bias tape that's half inch wide. Go ahead and open it up all the way. Fold, one, fold it over at the end one inch. We're going to clip it to the bottom of the bag. And we'll just clip around. Here we are back to the beginning. I'm going to overlap that trim off a little bit at the end. I'm going to grab the stapler once more and clip or staple in between within the seam allowance. Let's go to the machine so we can sew this on. Just like I did before, I'm going to bend the bag so it's nice and flat on that long edge over there. We want to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and sew this on. So make sure you're using a four stitch length or whatever your desired stitch length is. Now that that's done, let's fold our binding over. You have to pull it out. And then um, make sure everything's folded under still. And fold it around. Okay, so once again, I'm going to smash the bag flat to get it where I need to lay. I'm going to start on that long flat side. I'm going to use a five stitch length and we're going to go all the way around at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, friends, that was it. Check that you're digging everything. It looks okay. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side now. All right, she's done. Let's turn it out. Go around your binding and push that all out smooth. Close this up. And it's done. 
I actually made my strap a couple of weeks ago because I was testing out this vinyl and I just happened to be able to use it for this bag. So I was like, score. Um, so my strap is already done. So your barrel bag is all finished. Great job, everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Bye.